so last Sunday I had um, a kind of a gaming adventure. Uh, I went, I had some time off from my family. And not that my family is like work, but it kind of is, and that it's a responsibility, as well as um, something that brings you joy. So I had some time off and um, went to meet with this fellow who wanted, uh, who was organizing a, a game of Twilight Imperium 3rd Edition to play with a lot of people. Now what I know of the game um, going into it is one, it's a long game, two, it's multiplayer. Uh, those are both are attractive to me. Not because I necessarily love long games, but I love that option and that's a rare option to have because usually what's available is short games. So if someone's um, uh, organizing a, a long game of something, I'm interested in that. Uh, I also like multiplayer games because then there's some sort of, uh, I feel like the interaction is more complex and, and yeah, I don't know, it speaks to me more. And so I was interested in that. On the other hand, I've heard certain things about this game that maybe are things I wouldn't like. Um, so I went in for kind of a, a, tu a tutorial ship on how to play so that when you know came time for all of us to play, I wasn't um, slowing things down overly much. It's not a very tough game to learn. It did take some time, partially be I think because of the methodology we use, but I, I feel like I have a pretty good feel for what's going on. Um, and so upon reflection, on it, it made me think a little bit about innovation, and it kind of uh, it has a certain um, dynamic that's similar to innovation, except stretched out and blown up because it's a bigger game in some respects. So I'd say innovation has more possibilities in other respects. But anyway, um, what I what it was what it appeared to be is that you do you can do all this stuff in Twilight Imperium, but um, the important thing is scoring points, and you don't necessarily score points by doing the fun things or what you might enjoy doing, like interacting with others necessarily isn't what you want to be doing. It's, it's like you have this, it feels like it's supposed, it, it should be an open game and you have a lot of choices, but the game doesn't, um, doesn't congratulate you for doing that. It wants you to make the choices that just lead to these points. And so it kind of felt a little bit like kind of work and pleasure, which is sort of how innovation can be. Um, and maybe something that kind of annoyed me a little bit about it, that, but I didn't quite put my finger on until this, this, till learning about this Twilight and Korean. And I think a lot of games are like this, where, you know, what you enjoy doing in the game, in innovation, it's splaying and jumping ahead and, like, doing all these weird effects, you know, isn't necessarily what's going to get you victory. You know, in innovation, you want to do the things that score and give you achievements or whatever, um, and just do the other stuff kind of sparing that you kind of have to direct your play to these particular goal, po goal posts, which isn't as much fun. It's fun to be more sandboxy. Um, and so there's that, and I can see why some people would have trouble with that with Twilight Imperium. I can see why it's probably not going to be my favorite game, but I think I'm going to enjoy myself nonetheless because it is going to be multiplayer and it's going to be a lot of people and, well, maybe five or six, but that's, you know, that's good. Uh, and it's going to be a longer game, so I'm, ex I'm looking forward to it. Um, I don't think I'll be, uh, some pe people who get into that game really get into it, I don't think I'll be one of those people, even though I might end up playing it several times just because in this world, and we're gaming world here, uh, that's, that's what's available to me. Um, so let's take a look at, uh, after that, I went and visited my friend, and that wasn't necessarily about gaming that we were visiting, though he had gotten really into magic cards since last we met. Um, and he's not, you know, he's more into music and art than games for the most part. But got into magic cards, and so he showed me his collection and all that. Um, and he also show, gave me some games. He's been trying to, I, I haven't seen him in a few months because I've been very busy and he's been busy and blah, blah, blah. Uh, but in the, in the interviewing months, he's been trying to get board games from homeless people, people who are selling board games on the street, uh, which is always kind of interesting when I, I kind of, I always feel like um, board games are kind of, and, and maybe a lot of games in general, with the exception of maybe video games, are kind of in this little room 
separate from the rest of the world, you know, where uh, it's 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 always surprising to see them somewhere else because it's such a it feels like so niche like. Even though you know, once you once you get to talking to people, a lot of people have tried a lot of different games. Maybe not the ones that I like, but um, so it was interesting to uh, to see that. Hey, this guy, this homeless guy. This is kind of his livelihood is selling these board games. So um, first one, I haven't even opened this up yet. I've been still really busy, but it's in this box, Galactic Blaster. But it's not Galactic Blaster, it's um, another game called Bonk. And I don't know what it is, but there's a luchador doing something, it's like a dexterity type game, I think. You're supposed to drop the ball into the cup. Not normally my bag, but um, I'm excited to have been given this game, and I'll, I'll certainly give it a try at some point. So there's that. My son is uh, communicating with me. I'm going to have to hurry up here. And then the other two games I got um, were both of a theme, and these are still in shrink, haven't been opened, and they're called Hopscotch Politics. And it looks like they're about the same game, um, but they're different. In terms, like this one is Bear versus Bull Market, and this one is Democrats versus Republicans. Um, there's some stuff on the back there. It's all in the street wrap. I don't know how you keep it all. I guess maybe use a paper clip to keep it all together once you once you open it. Um, but yeah, probably not a lot to this game. Looks like there's spinners. I don't know. But it's it's interesting to find a game that you there's no data about that I'm aware of. Um, 1991, I think this was published. So. That's something the world gave me. Actually, this kind of both both of the games in world uh, parts that happened this Sunday were what the world gave me. Um, another gaming, I started I started playing Yellowstone with the kids. Uh, Yellowstone is a game. I wish I could have. I didn't think to hold, bring it out to hold it up, so you could see some visual Yellowstone. But I guess you can see some trees behind me, and I'm sure there are trees at Yellowstone National Park, but I've never been there. Um, but anyway, it's a game where you're herding animals, well not herding animals, you're a herd of animals herding yourself between your summer and winter ranges. Um, a lot of fun. I played it one-on-one. -on -one. I think I really want to play it with the full complement of four because it seems like a very traffic jammy game. Like, uh, kind of what you can do to compete with the other person is, one, you can take food that they might be after. Uh, you can also move predators towards them, but a big thing you can do is you can just block them off, you know, get your herd in a big straight line so that they can't get through. Uh, so it's, yeah, so I think with all four you could really have some fun traffic madness uh, going on in Yellowstone National Park.